Okay, let's say you want to create a vinyl on the vinyl cutter in the lab. So I'm just going to go to a new image, 300 dpi is fine. You should just do have a new file here and that'll work. So, and then I would take the image I want to I want to use. So, I'm going to go into my files here. Let's say you want to do an AZ loop right here. First off, I would suggest finding a black and white one, which you can find in the Google Drive here, right here, like white. But for the best example, I'll show you how to do it with colored first, just in case you do get a colored one, because that's what's most difficult. So we're just going to drag that over here. All right, so I'm going to make this the right size. Let's just say we want it to be four inches. That's actually pretty wide for a sticker. That's it's a pretty large sticker. So normally it wouldn't be that size, but, but yeah. So what we're going to do is go to File, Print. We're going to start like this, and we're going to select the printer, the vinyl cutter. It should say uh, U.S. Cutter. I don't have one right now. That's fine. So uh, I'm just going to do this. But make sure you select the U.S. Cutter. Uh, make sure it's plugged in. I'll set up. It's turned on. Uh, click Apply and then Cancel. And then you're going to uh, set this all up first. You don't have to put the vinyl in just yet. This could be the first thing you do. Um, I'm going to take this and actually... Yeah, this template will change once the vinyl is in. It doesn't really matter right now. Let's just, let's just focus on vectoring. So I'm going to right-click, Outline Trace, and go to Detailed Logo. Um, logo is a good one, but since we have such small text right here, I'm going to do Detailed Logo. It makes it a little bit more detailed. All right, so now it just vectored it. Uh, it's trying to pick it up by the background. First off, I'm going to click Remove Color from Entire Image. Um, I would check that mostly every time. If you're still getting background image in here, then I would click Specific Color, and then choose this white. That way it picks it up. Uh, it's not picking it up, but sometimes it does. Normally it would show up here and then you pick it up, but automatic is working for me right now. So if you zoom in by scrolling, you can see the details kind of all right, but yeah, look how this is all gross, right? So that's when you would have to mess with this. We can increase some detail. We can maybe increase some smoothing. It's not showing much of a difference because this part isn't affected. Corner smoothness. There, that, this is affected by corner smoothness. So you can do this a ton until it looks good, but it's going to mess up other areas like this. See, now look at that. So I'm going to reduce detail, maybe reduce some of this, and maybe reduce this. So this it file is not the best because it's very small. Um, and these are the issues I had with with the sponsors too. So this is a common issue. It kind of kind of is ugly. Um, that's a very difficult situation. If that happens, then I would just print this logo without the text, and maybe I'll be able to figure it out later. But right now, it's an issue that is unavoidable. Another issue right here is this. You see this? If we were to right now be like, oh, this is good. Okay. The way you can tell if it's vectored is if you drag it. See, when you drag it, it should outline everywhere it's going to cut. This is what it would look like. But you see that little zigzag right here? It's going to cut that. We don't want it to cut that. We want that to be just one color, right? So I'm just going to get rid of this. That's the old image. So, uh, so far it looks good. It would cut everything around the edge, but that zigzag. So I'm going to right click and go to, actually, I'm just going to go back to where we were. So because that would happen in your editing, um, editing file, you would notice that and be like, oh, well, I don't, I don't like this at all because it's going to cut that. So I would go to colors and this is where it shows all the colors in the image. You can get rid of this, this dark orange color to make it just one. So I'm going to see if that's the one that isn't it. There's another orange. Nope. Uh, it's getting rid of those. This one. Yeah. See how it's outlined. That's the one I want to get rid of. So I get rid of that, get rid of that. Boom. Now this is all one color. So this whole entire thing had these dark orange shades, as you see up here. Well, by erasing these, it reduced it down just to one color. So now it's treating this whole thing as one object instead of all these tiny little objects as the image actually is. The rest of these grays are in here. So if you want to serve, like, solve this issue, you probably can by deleting some of the unnecessary grays that may be causing these to not communicate very well. So boom, this is all the gray that we have here. So it just kind of gets rid of some. That is very strange. It picked it up. <laughs> yeah. So I, I erased one too many. So yeah, that should pick it up like that. So, um, and the, yeah, the rest of it's like that. So boom, there we go. Now, see, there's no zigzag here. It's treated this whole loop as one object. So now we're done. I'm going to erase this. This is just an image for your reference. Okay. So now this is vectored. This is ready to cut. So I'm going to copy and paste just as many as I want you know put them in the position I want to but we're not going to position just yet this is where we get the printer a part of this so we're going to go to the vinyl cutter and I'm going to turn on my webcam right now just so you can get a visual of and so I can kind of display so I'm just displaying this so I can kind of 
show you what I'm kind of saying when I'm trying to talk. So um, let me get this bigger here. Cool. So one thing I'm doing is, or one thing you'll do is you'll go to the vinyl cutter and put the uh, vinyl in the back. I'm sure you kind of know how to do this, but I'm just going through it just so I can have all the information in one place on a video, just in case someone else does this too. But put the vinyl in the back, put the uh, uh, clamps where they should be on the designated markers. Um, make sure they're close to the edge because there is a tolerance with the machine that if you put them more to the center, it doesn't scan the edge length. So try and get them close to the edge, but not too close where the rollers fall off the vinyl. Um, pull it back and then it should be able to scan from machine. So then what you would do is scan the size. It should be like a piece. I'm not sure about the vinyl cutter in the lab because it's a little different, but in the startup labs, you can just click roll or piece. And if it's a roll, it just scans left or right. Uh, and it knows the roll is infinity, if you will. If it's a piece, it does left to right and back. Uh, so if you're doing a piece, you can do piece. If a roll, I'm not sure how to exactly measure it, but if you have the measurements of the roll, you can just kind of plug in it manually. So we know that the roll is 24 inches. So I'm gonna say we're gonna put it in wide like it's a roll. So I'm gonna put 24 inches because that's most vinyl roll. So like the vinyl pieces, not the t-shirt. The t-shirt press is normally 15 inches. So. Uh, so I'm going to select all my ones that I made and I'm going to kind of fit them in here. Let's say we don't want to print too much. We're going to do uh, a whole roll and then 12 feet depth. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm making my template to kind of simulate the marking area of what we will be printing on. So then I'm going to do all this, you know, print however many I want. You know, I can make a, I can make a bunch. I can make a bunch of these. You know, I'm going to do this. You know, just whatever. I want to print all these in this space. I would try and get them close to each other so that way you're not wasting vinyl. But also, you got to remember, you got to cut between these, so don't make them too close. Then you're going to go to File. I'm going to get rid of this cam here now so that way it's not too strange trying to watch my face. <laughs> all right, so then you go to File and Print. And then here we're going to go to Preferences. All right, this doesn't show it because I don't have the right printer selected. Um, but let me see if one of them can simulate it preferences. No. So what would happen is the printer should have a different setting in preferences. You click preferences and it should say two marks right here. Um, it'll show sizes. It'll say like X and Y or whatever. And there's a button basically right here. Um, ignore what you're looking at here, but there's a button, uh, and, and relative to this window that says get from machine, you would just click that. Once you click that, it should show you a, a size difference and then you click print preview and it should show this. So like this space is different than the drop because this is a US letter. This is the get from machine that my normal standard inkjet printer has. So um, you normally click click get from machine and it would change the size. And this actually is what it will print. So you can move around your file and if your template matches the get from machine very similarly, you shouldn't have too much adjusting to do. But whatever you do, this is what will print. So if I would do mine, oops, if I were to do mine, I'm going to get rid of my print preview. If I were to do mine eight and a half by 11, so this would be 11, 8.5. So let's say yours is this size, you know, I'm going to get rid of all these. I just want to print this, right? So eight and a half by 11, I'm going to go to file, print, preferences, get from machine. Mine's going to be eight and a half, 11 and then go to apply, print preview. Boom, see, like they match. They almost look the same because they're the same sizes. Um, once that is set, all you have to do is click print and then it should work. It should print just like that. If you have any more issues, just let me know and I'll be able to help.